God, he said, since you don't want to hear me, I'm not going to hear you either. Why? Well, says, I'm going to drive it home that we are the Israelites. This is how we know we are the Israelites. Give me 68. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So God's going to bring you to Egypt again. When we were in Egypt, what were, what were the Israelites doing in Egypt? They were slaves, right? So Egypt got a, a, a different meaning because back then it was called Mizraim. Egypt just means captivity. Watch. We're going to let the Bible do it. Watch this. Deuteronomy 5 and 6. I'm the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So Egypt is the house of bondage or the house of captivity, right. the house of slavery. So now when you read Deuteronomy 28, 68, look what he said. Before we read it, how did our people get to America? The blacks. On boats and ships. Let's see what the Bible says. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Bring you to slavery again, how? With ships. How did we get over here? How did God say the Israelites were going to get over here? With ships. By the way, wherever I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. The way I'm telling you, because you remember this was Moses bringing us into our promised land. He said, the same way I'm telling you this is going to happen, you ain't going to see this promised land no more if you break these commandments. Right. Read. And there, and there, when you get out wherever the ships docked, see, you got this sign right here. We, bought, we docked all over here in North and South America. He said, wherever those ships docked, also in Europe too. What's going to happen? And then you shall be sold unto your enemy. What happened when we got out the ships? We were sold, right? Read. For bond men and bond women. Slave man and slave woman. Read. And no man shall buy you. Buy means to save or redeem. So we didn't have many great leaders rise up, right? We had... Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, Martin Luther King, Marcus Garvey, Barack Obama, everybody. But if you look at the conditions that we're in, do we still live in the poverty-stricken areas? We still in the worst conditions, so ain't none of them saved us. God said, ain't nobody going to save you once I put these curses on you. Nobody going to save us. So this, this is a question right here. So remember, Moses was talking to the Israelites in this context, right? And he said all these things are going to happen to them if they break the commandments. If God says this was only going to happen to the Israelites, and all these curses that happen fit the blacks, Hispanics, and the Native Americans, who are the blacks, Hispanics, and the Native Americans? We are what? What? Who are they according to the Bible? Because you ain't gonna find black, Hispanic, or Native American in the Bible as a nationality. We are the twelve tribes of Israel. That's right. We are the Israelites according to the Bible, that's and that's right. why we come out here to preach to the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Hey. We the Israelites, it's starting to start keeping these commandments. You know what I'm saying? Watch it, give me 10 and 12. This is what we are here to teach our people, because a lot of our people, they'll say, I know we the Israelites, I know, but it's a certain stipulation, a certain criteria you gotta do once you figure out we are the Israelites. Watch this. Deuteronomy 10 and 12. And now Israel, what does the Lord require of thee? So God is always only talking to Israel. The Bible is written by Israel, for Israel, to Israel. Read. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So our people always say, yeah, I fear God. I want to serve God. I love God. How you do it? To keep the commandments of the Lord. To keep the commandments of the Lord. So that's the requirement of knowing that you're an Israelite. Right now, we got to change and start keeping the commandments of the Lord. Finish that. And his statutes, which I commanded this day, for thy good. And it's for your own good, right? So, do you know some commandments in the Bible? We got what, well, like, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery. Think about, <laughs> it's more than Ten Commandments, but let's think about the Ten Commandments. If all of our people stop stealing, would that be for the good of our nation? Like, would it benefit our nation if we didn't steal from each other? It wouldn't benefit us? If we stopped stealing from each other, if I didn't have to worry about nobody breaking in my house, It'll be better for our nation, right? If we didn't sleep around with our women, whore out our sisters and all that, it'll be better for us as a people, right? right. God said these commandments is for our own good. So we got to learn how to keep these commandments for our own good, right? So I'm going to show you a couple commandments, simple commandments. Give me a, for, before I get them, give me fresh down five and three. Let me show you what God said about these commandments. Because like I, like I said, you go to church, everybody say, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Let's see how God says you love him. First John five and three. For this is the love of God. Then we keep his commandments. So that's how you show you love God, by keeping his commandments. But this is what he said about it. And his commandments are not grievous. 
His commandments ain't grievous. It's not hard to keep God's commandments. I mean, we all fall short, but it ain't hard to get back on the horse and keep God's commandments. Us out here, we have decided, hey, we're going to keep God's commandments. We read the Bible, we read what it said, and it's like, hey, God said we got to keep the commandments. We got to keep the commandments. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Let me show you one. Give me the numbers. 15. Let me show you one commandment. Very simple to keep. You know what I'm saying? That our people, we ain't doing though. You know what I'm saying? Watch this. Numbers 15 and 38. Speak unto the children of Israel. There you go again, children of Israel. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. He said make fringes in the border of the garments. So if you look at all our shirts at the bottom of them, we got these fringes. And it's not just on these shirts. Every shirt I own got fringes on the bottom of it. Right. Read. Throughout their generation. Because God said the Israelites got to be there forever, right? Read. And then they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Upon the borders, if you look at them, we all got the ribbon of blue on there, right? Because God said put a fringe and a ribbon of the blue. Why you say that? And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. These are here to remind you to keep the commandments of the Lord because sometimes you slip. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think we need a constant reminder because in this world without a distraction, sometimes your mind ain't always where it should be at. But once you see those fringes, oh shoot, I got to make sure I'm walking these walk the way I'm supposed to. I got to make sure I'm keeping the commandments. I can't be looking at the sister. You know what I'm saying? She walk by and I look and I'm like, oh shoot, I ain't supposed to be doing that. Or you got to commit a bill. It's more fornication. You take your shirt off of your fringe and rub on your face. Like, I can't do this. I'm an Israelite. You know what I'm saying? So that's a simple commandment God put in place. Like he said, for your good. It's for our good that we do these commandments, right? right? Let me give you another sin. I'm going to show you a sin that you're breaking that you might not even know it. Because a lot of our people don't. You got it? Leviticus 21. Leviticus 21 and 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head. So God says the Israelites are not supposed to make baldness upon your head. You know what I'm saying? We're not supposed to shave our head. Read. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Beard. So you got the beard part right. That's how it's supposed to be. God wants all the men to have beards because that's a manly badge of honor. It shows that you're a man. In the wild kingdom, how do you separate a male line from a female line? The main, right? That's how you can tell that's the dominant, that's the dominant species out of those. Finish that verse. Nor make any cuttings in their flesh. Nor make any cuttings in the flesh. That's tattoos. But a lot of us made mistakes. I got tattoos. We all got, a lot of us got tattoos. We didn't know. But once you figure out, and you figure out that requirement that God gave us, now it ain't no more tattoos. You know what I'm saying? Now we got to grow the hair out. You know what I'm saying? You ain't necessarily got to let it get big. You can cut it down real low. You know what I'm saying? You don't got to shave it. Don't use a razor. But you can get the clippers, put on a lower setting, and cut it as low as you can. You know what I'm saying? And if you're losing it, give me that forehead ball. 1340. So, some brothers, some brothers, hey, I'm um, losing it, but it ain't nothing I can do. You know what I'm saying? We got brothers who, who you get older, it happens. You know what I'm saying? So, this is what God said about that, though. Read. Leviticus 13 and 40. And the man whose hair is falling off his head, he is bald, yet is he clean. So, God calls it forehead bald. If you, if you if your hairline start receding, you lost that hair, but you're still clean because you didn't shave it. If right. you shave it, you won't clean, but when it fall off, hey, you can't help that. Right. You know what I'm saying? We can't make our hair grow. So you don't cut it out, but even if, even when it's receding, still just get it cut low. Don't shave it off. That's right. a commandment of God. It is not hard to do. It might not be fashion, you know what I'm saying, according to the world, but it's a commandment of God, so we got to do it. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? So God said to uh, grow our hair out and all that. Let me ask you another question before we keep going. Do you, who is this? Do you know who this is? You don't know what it is? Who the world say he is? They say Jesus. How did Jesus look though? Jesus was black. All right, we ain't even got to go there. So, if Jesus was black, right? And Jesus was what? What, right, what nationality was Jesus? He was a Jew, right? So, if Jesus was a Jew and he was black, who was that in the land of Israel over there? Because they call themselves the Jews, right? But God got a name for him. Give me Revelation 2 and 9. This is what God told us what they are. God gave us, because he knew they was going to do what they was doing. They was already starting to practice it 
in uh, Jesus' time. That's why Herod, Herod, an Edomite, a white man, was the king of Judea. Because they was already starting to steal our nationality then. But this is what God said. Right? Revelation 2 and 9. I know thy work and tribulation and poverty. So God talked to the Israelites, the churches. He said, I know thy works in your tribulation and poverty because we live in these conditions. He said, I know it. But watch this. But thou art rich. We rich because all the promises in this Bible of the kingdom to come is for the blacks, Spanish, and the Native Americans. So we rich. We just ain't got our inheritance yet. Read. And I know the blasphemy, blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. So the people over there, they, the blasphemy lies that they say they are Jews. And are not. They not the real Jews. We know that because like you said, Jesus Christ is black. We the Israelites, we fit the curses. So we know they not the Jews. What do you say they are? But are the synagogue of Satan. They are the synagogue of Satan. All the Illuminati and all that, that's them. The shadow government they're running, that's that race over there. God said that's the synagogue of Satan. They're the ones who are pushing homosexuality on our people. They're the ones who are telling our sisters it's okay to put on pants. They don't want telling the brothers it's okay to put on dresses and wear rompers and all that. That's the synagogue of Satan. They're the ones who are pushing that. So that's what we try to get our people to realize. Why would God need to save the synagogue of Satan? They run everything right now. You know what I'm saying? God only came to save the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how our men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.